My name is Nichelle Wilson. I've been at SMART for 26 years. I've been training for 15. Today I'm going to be performing a Class B pre-trip inspection. First we're going to start with the seatbelt. We're going to make sure that it's properly mounted and secure, no rips, no tears, and adjust it properly for yourself. Now we're going to do a safe start. Put your foot on the brake, get the coach and day run, start it up. At this time you'll see the ABS light. It'll disappear and that means that the NDS light is working properly. Now we're going to do the light indicators. The light indicator consists of the left signal, right signal, high beams, and your four ways. Okay, so now we're going to do our left turn signal, it's right here, then we're going to do the right, then we're going to do the high beams, then we're going to do the four ways. First we're going to do the oil pressure gauge, the water gauge, and this is the amp and the voltmeter, and this is the air. Between 120 and 140 the governor blow. When the engine warm, they'll all rise to the normal operating range. Next, we're gonna do the heat and defrost. Right here is the heat and defrost. We're gonna make sure they work on all speeds, low, medium, and high. All right, now we're gonna do the windshields. Uh, the windshields, you're gonna make sure it's properly mounted and secure. No chips, no cracks, clean, free of your little stickers. Okay. Now we're gonna do your windshield wipers. We're gonna test it on low, medium, and high. And we also are gonna make sure that it's full of fluid. That's by pushing it in. Now we're gonna do the mirrors. You have a mirror on the outside, inside, right there, one on the outside, and it's one in the back. You're gonna make sure they're properly mounted and secure and adjust it properly for yourself. So we're gonna do the horn. This coach has one horn, it's working properly. First we're gonna do the park brake test. You can put your foot over the brake. Gonna put the coach in drive. Gonna give it some gas. Coach didn't move, that means the parking brake is working properly. Next is the service brake. Gonna put your foot back over the brake. Push your park brake down. Give it a little gas. Let it roll about five feet. The coach stop. That means that the park the service brake is working properly. Put it in neutral, park brake up. Next is the four point air brake test. All right, once the governor blows, the air pressure is all built up and now you're gonna start your four point air brake test. At this time, you're gonna turn the coach off, turn it to day run, push your park brake down. You're gonna hold your foot over the brake. You're gonna make sure you do not lose more than three PSI's in a minute. After the minute is up, you're gonna begin to fan. At 60 PSI's, you should hear your bells and your whistles and your warning lights. And between 25 and 45, your park brake should pop up. Park brakes has popped up. That means that your four point air brake test is complete. Now you're gonna to start to coach up. Between 120 and 140, your governor should blow. The governor has blown. Your four point air brake test is complete. 
At this time, we're going to deploy the lift. You're going to kneel the coach. And you're going to push it to deploy. And you're going to bring it back up to the stove position. You also want to test your lift and make sure that it holds your weight. All set. This is your emergency equipment. Right here we have a fully charged fire extinguisher, not expired. We have three reflective triangles and we have extra circuit breakers and fuses up here. That's your emergency equipment. Now we're gonna be checking the emergency exit. We have six windows, the windows with the red handles. We have two doors and we have one hatch. Now we're gonna be setting, checking our seating. We have to make sure that the uppers are attached to the lowers. And you do that by pulling on the bottom of them, checking the top, checking the railings, checking the seats, checking the bottom. See. Uppers are attached to the lowers. Hi, my name is Kenneman Hicks. I'm going to be doing the exterior portion of the coach for the CDL. I've been with SMART for 29 years. I've been a master trainer for roughly 21 years. So when you come outside the coach, first thing you want to start off with, you talked about the, the uh, wipers and you talked about the mirrors and everything while you were on the inside. So when you come out, you want to physically touch the mirrors and everything when you come outside. Then you want to point out your marker lights and your clearance lights. And the proper colors are red to the rear and amber everywhere else. When you come outside, you want to point out your headlights, tell them that they're working, properly monitored and secure, and your turn signals. You point your turn signals out and tell them that they're properly monitored and secure and that they're working. Then you want to come to the side here. You want to check the uh, condition of the tire. Make sure that there's no cuts, bulges, or tread separation. And you want to make sure that the uh, tire depth is no less than 230 seconds in the front. Then you want to check to make sure that there's a valve stem and that it has a cap. And you want to make sure that the, there's no damage to the, the rim and there's no well repair. And you want to check your lug nuts. Make sure that they're properly mounted and secure. No distortions at the bow holes, no uh, shiny threads or rust trails. And make sure that none of the lugs are missing. And you wanna check your, your uh, hub seal. And make sure it's properly mounted and secure and that it's filled to the proper fuel level. You also wanna check the inflation with a tire gauge or a tire mallet. Then you wanna come around. Then you wanna stop at the front. You point out the uh, turn signal and the upper clearance light up there. Then you're going to go to your steering box and hoses. You're going to make sure that it's properly mounted and secure, no missing parts, and no damage. And for the steering leakage, you want to check your pitman arm, your drag link, your steering knuckle, your tie rod, your castle nut, and your cotter pin. You want to make sure there's no missing parts and everything that is in place, and make sure the cotter pins are in place. Then you would point behind the wheel and you would check the uh, slack adjusters and the push rods. You would make sure it's properly mounted and secure with no missing parts and no more than one inch pull when the brakes are off. And also make sure that the push rod is not bent, broken, or damaged. The drums and linings you would point to the tire and you would point inside. This coach has disc brakes, so which consist of rotors, pads, and calipers. You would make sure it's properly mounted and secure, not leaking, and that the pads and the rotors are not worn dangerously thin. And then while you also, while you're here, you would check the splash guards. Make sure the splash guards are properly mounted and secure, not missing and not damaged. Actually, you would check the, check the splash guards on the entire coach. Ready? Then when you get to the side of the coach, you want to point out your marker light, your side marker light, and also your, your turn signal on the back there. But for the frame, you point to the side of the coach, and you would check the uh, cross members, the I-bibs, the I-beams, and the ribs to make sure that there's no missing parts and that there's no broken wells. When you get to the rear tire, 
You want to point out, then you want to point, and you can tell me you're going to talk about the brakes. This coach also had rear suspension. You want to check the shocks and the airbags. You want to make sure that the property monitor is secure, not damaged, and not leaky. And the torque arm, you want to make sure it's properly mounted and secure, not bent, not damaged. And the torque mounts, you want to make sure that they're properly mounted and secure. Then you want to check the, the uh, brake hoses and the lines and make sure they're properly mounted and secure, not leaking and in good condition. And make sure that the brake chamber is not missing, is properly mounted and secure, and that there's a clamp on it. When you come to the rear, you want to point out all your lights, clearance lights turn signal, brake lights. Then you want to make sure that the hinges on the rear door are properly mounted and secure, not broken, and that the door opens and closes properly. Then you want to check the side, make sure that they're properly mounted and secure. Where you would, would point at the, uh, the, the coolant reservoir, you check the sight glass to make sure that it's properly mounted and secure and that it has fluid. If the engine was cool, you remove the cap and check for leaks. Then you want to come over and check the oil level. Then you, you, you point out and check your oil. Make sure it's at the proper level, which is between add and full. Then you'll come around to the other side. Then you want to point out your water pump. Make sure it's properly mounted and secure, not leaking. And you have to tell them that it's belt driven. You point out the alternator. Tell them that you check to make sure it's properly mounted and secure, that the holes, that the uh, the wires are not frayed or not loose, and that the alternator is belt driven. Then you have to point out the air compressor, which is back there. Tell them that it's make sure it's properly mounted and secure, not leaking, and that that's gear driven. Then you want to point out your belts, all your belts. Make sure they're properly mounted and secure, not frayed, not loose, and no more than three quarter of an inch play. You point out all your hoses, make sure that they're not leaking, not frayed, and no damage. For the exhaust, you'll point back there, you'll point out the exhaust system, make sure it's not leaking, properly mounted and secure, and you have to check the top. So you'll point out the, uh, the, the exhaust stack up there, and you'll tell them you'll be checking for signs of soot trails. Ah, they get dirty. Okay. Here's the power steam. Okay, then you, you will check the power steering reservoir to make sure that it's properly mounted and secure, not leaking, and that it has fluid. And that's gear driven. After you do the power steering, then you're going to come to the drive shaft. You're going to point behind the back tire and you'll tell him that you will check to make sure it's properly mounted and secure, not leaking, and free of foreign objects. When you get to the rear tire on this side, you'll tell the examiner that you're going to check this tire the same way you did the other tire on the other side. And also you point out all your, your lights, your turn signal lights. And then you're going to come over to your fuel door. You'll take, check to make sure that the hinges are properly mounted and secure, that the door opens and closes properly. You'll check on the inside to make sure that the tank is it's not leaking, that the straps are on properly, and, and that it has a cap and it's on tight. To the rear door, you check the rear door, make sure that it's properly mounted and secure, and that the seals are intact. Then your turn signal. Then when you get to the rear, the, the tire on this side, you'll tell them that you'll check this tire the same way you did on the other side. Then you check the front door, make sure it's properly mounted and secure. Opens and closes. And when you get ready to step in, you wanna make sure you keep three point of contact. You wanna grab both handrails, your foot, and you step in. And that concludes the uh, exterior portion of the CDL test.